welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and I'm now answering question number eight from exercise 2e of chapter 2 from the Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level textbook from Pearson's. And uh, this question here is another one of those disguised quadratic questions, but it's a bit more uh, involved because it involves things that we will be going through later on in later chapters when we do P2, but it's still something that. We should be um, able to cope with at this stage um, with our knowledge from IGCSEs. So this question here it says the function f is defined as f of x equals 3 to the power of 2x minus 28 times 3 to the power of x plus 27 and this means x is an element of real numbers that means x can be any real number. Write f of x in the form 3 to the power of x minus a and 3 to the power of x minus b where a and b are real constants. So they're basically telling you to factorize this. Okay, they're telling you to uh, factorize this first, and then we can find uh, the roots of the function. Now, how would we factorize this? Well, again, we can think about this as um, a disguised quadratic. Here you have 3 to the power of x. <clears throat> Let me sort the pen out a bit. Okay, here we have 3 to the power of x. And here we have 3 to the power of 2x. Now, how are they related? Well, what I can do is I can take 3 to the power of 2x and I can express this either as 3 to the power of 2 to the power of x if I wanted to. Okay, because you can multiply the powers. Or, which would be more important for us, I can express this as 3 to the power of x to the power of 2. If you multiply the powers, you get 3 to the power of 2x. Now, this is what's kind of more useful for us because we can see that this is the square... 3 to the power of x all squared is the square of 3 to the power of x. So what we can do is you can rewrite this as f, f of x is equal to 3 to the power of x squared minus 28 times 3 to the power of x plus 27. Now if you want to, if you want to, you can call 3 to the power of x a letter. For example, you could say let p equal 3 to the power of x. In this case, this will be p squared minus 28p plus 27 and then we can just factorize this we can say okay two numbers that multiply to give us um, 27 and um, they add to give us minus 28 both have to be the same sign both negative and of course it's 27 and 1 minus 27 times minus 1 is 27 positive and 27 minus 27 minus or plus minus 1 is minus 28p so 28 sorry so now we've got we've, we've factorized it but we want to write it back in this form well we know that p is 3 to the power of x so you end up with 3 to the power of x minus 27 and 3 to the power of x minus 1 so there we have um, part, part finished part a and then once we have done that hence remember hence means using your you know using what you found so what we're going to do now is we're going to use what we found to find the roots of the equation. Now remember the roots of an equation are when the function is equal to zero. The, the x values when the function equals zero. Okay, so we can say that the function we've, we've just mentioned, the function is now factorized as this, and that's how we're going to solve it. We can say, okay, when 3 to the power of x minus 27 times 3 to the power of x minus 1 equals zero, so then we say either 3 to the power of x minus 27 is 0 or 3 to the power of x minus 1 is 0. So we can say that 3 to the power of x equals 27 or 3 to the power of x equals 1, equals positive 1. So how do we solve these equations? These are exponential equations which we're going to go through again but we learnt about them in, in IGCSE work and in what we, are, what we know so far in P1 what we can do is we can say okay what we can do is we can um, equate them if we make the bases the same okay if we can make the bases the same then the powers will be the same so if this is 3 to the power of x if i can express this as 3 to the power of something then i can you know then i can uh, equate the, the powers because once the bases are the same then the powers will be the same and i can see that 27 <coughs> is equal to 3 cubed now once i've got that there i know that x must equal 3 3 to the power of 3 equals 27. So the key to solving these types of equations is to make the base of the, the bases on both sides the same. So 3 to the power of x equals 27. That means 
3 to the power of x equals 3 to the power of 3. And of course, we know that when anything to the power of 0 equals 1, x must be 0. You can also think of it as this. This is 1 is the same as 3 to the power of 0, so therefore x equals 0. So there's, those are the two solutions. So this is another disguised quadratic, but one in exponential form. Okay, so this little um, bit of information here that 3 to the power of x all squared is the same as 3 to the power of 2x because you can think about the you know when you multiply the powers you get 3 to the power of 2x so that could have been either 3 to the power of 2 squared or it could have been 3 to the power of x squared that's the one we need because we got 3 to the power of x got 3 to the power of x squared so it's a quadratic it's a disguised quadratic again Okay, so anytime you have any question involving disguised quadratics, for example, you might have one term is which is x to the power of 8 and the other one is x to the power of 4. This is like x to the power of 4 squared and this is like, you know, x to the power of 4. So you can call one of them, for example, you can call this p, this will be p squared and this will be p. Or, for example, x to the power of 6 and x to the power of 3. Anytime the power is double, okay, like in, in this type of question, you can say this is p squared and this is p. If you call p x cubed so if you call p px cubed this will be p this will be p squared anytime you see that you can you you can apply this okay because i've been getting a lot of uh, questions asking about the same thing about different questions but they're all very similar okay so i was asked about a question earlier which i think is over here um from this one uh, and then somebody also asked for x question 7c in the same paper and 7c has that situation which has an x to the power of 3 and has an x to the power of 6 in the equation. So I would say let, let the part that calls x to the power of 3 call it a letter like b, for example. Therefore, x to the power of 6 part would be b to the power of 2. And then continue exactly the same way. Solve it. And in the end, you'll have x cubed equals and x cubed equals. And you take the cube root of both sides in order to find the solutions. Okay, so the student who asked me to do 7, um, seven part c, please try and apply that yourself first and see if you can work it out. And if you've got it yourself, then that's fine. Okay, it's much better to answer these questions yourself once you've got the idea instead of asking about every single different case of it. Okay, you should try and apply what you learned to different types of questions. And that's much better for you than just getting everything answered for you without trying, you know, hard enough. Okay, so that's the answer to question number eight, part A and B. Uh, thank you for watching. Other questions that you might want to watch from uh, the textbook of chapter 2 of um, this um, Pearson's Edexcel International A-Level textbook, P1, you can find in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions in general about quadratics in P2, P1, sorry, you can find in the playlist over here. Thank you for watching. See you soon.